Hello everyone, and welcome out to another episode of Dat Demo. Today, we are going to look at the demo of Long Night, a game that has recently come up on Greenlight and is currently having a Kickstarter. Is this a game that is worth being funded? Well, let's find out. Okay, we are going into this blind as to get complete first impressions. Uh, resolution is fine. Turn those on high, because why not? Controls. Move with WASD. Fire is F, okay. So it looks like we're not going to be using the mouse. Uh, better experience with a gamepad. Well, I don't really care. So let's go back and run or die. Let's see what uh, scares this game has for us. If this looks familiar, it's because uh, these people are drawing a lot of inspiration from the old Resident Evil 1 games, uh, the old ones before 4, most notably 1, uh, The Love Nest of Demon and Dan, I'm sorry. Hmm. Uh, Silent Hill 2 was also on that list, as was Obscure, and Hunting Grounds. And I liked a lot of those games. I liked Resident Evil 1, Silent Hill 2. What do we have? Oh, that's the mascot of the game creators. Uh, Twisted Face, I believe they're called. Okay, so, let's see. So space is sprint. Can't really sprint right now. Um, I was actually expecting tank controls, but uh, it's kind of nice having, you know, not tank controls. Let's see what's in here. Okay, guess nothing. Lighting is very nice. Shadows are very clear, which is good for a survival horror game. But let's venture out. Oh, hmm. This room's a bit messy. Looks like we're in a log cabin. It's always interesting. Uh, let's take a look at the table. Get Dewey's lighter. So we need to find Dewey's lighter and a key. Okay, well that's fair enough. Visually the game looks pretty nice. So oh, hmm. bathroom is out of order. What do we have here? Uh yeah. Ah. It would appear we have a puzzle. We do not know the combination, so let's see. Ooh, the were possum. Dewey's absolute favorite tonight. The clawed threat. Hmm. Sounds like a fun, schlocky B horror movie. Yeah, th those are fun to watch, I'm not gonna not gonna deny that. Oh, family picture. Let's oh, did I hit no? Nothing more interesting to pick up. It looked like it was all torn up. Why would Dewey do that? Okay, so we're at a uh, abandoned summer camp. I'm starting to really enjoy this. <laughs> uh, just the idea, you know, being at an abandoned summer camp, uh, cabin in the woods, looks like there's a PlayStation 1 down there. What's this? Hmm. A little bit of uh, English errors here and there. Nothing unforgivable. I'd like to turn off the TV and not waste the power, but uh, it's not really an option. Now, let's see if we can go into the inventory stress. Uh, don't quite know what that is. Um, Dana's notes. Visualize. Okay, so. Let's see. 
let's use the family picture. Uh, fire to turn picture. Oh. Ah, uh, okay. Sprint to rotate. So that would be like that. Okay. If I could give any advice to the creators of this game, it would be make it more compatible with a uh, mouse and keyboard. Make it more PC. Let's uh, turn the picture around, and we have... Okay, looks like 08, 15, 1993. So, let's see. Do I have something around here to write? Oh, well, I have this here, so. 08, 15, 1993. stay like that. And I got the camping map. So, let's get out of this. So, we have to find Dewey's lighter. And the key. Who leaves just the whole of this? Eh. Again, abandoned summer camp. So, you know, let's just try the year. It shows you what's interactable. Wait. I saw it last year at Camden. Hmm. Well, how else could we figure out what's in that lockbox? Let's take another look around. Doors wrecked. C D right there. Hmm. Nothing interesting in there to pick up, so we're going to Uh, the specific dates, not just so visualize. That's not helpful. Okay, so 08. Why are the ones written like that? Is it part of the 
clue? Let's try 0815, maybe. Hmm. Okay. Oh! 0893. I will take Dewey Zippo. Okay, let's get out of here. What's this? Poor Toad Totem. No, do not find any princess that could give you the magic kiss. Well, um, where did they say they were going to be? That's one one. <laughs> to the Wendigo Jaw, so that's where we're going. Okay. And we had to bring the lighter, so we have that. So let's look at the hand menu. Can we get a better look at that? No? Well, um... Let's explore then, I guess. So it's up this way. Looks like our options are kind of limited as to where to go anyways. That helps a little. Ooh, this is creepy. Okay, I definitely know how to make one yet. stress meter gets too far up, he stops to catch his breath. She was very fast. But I have to manage and not just call out one. So yeah, it looks like she just kind of breaks your neck. Okay, so, I saw an area that it looked like I could duck on. Maybe I have to hide from her? So that was the end of Run or Die. Next, we will take a look at Hide and Seek. But for right now, I think I'll quit. <laughs> uh, be sure to check in next time for part two, Hide and Seek. I'm assuming it gets a bit more hairy there. <laughs> this has been the Mayor of Gaming. I'll leave a link below. Uh, that'll lead to their Steam page and another one for their Kickstarter. If this game looks interesting to you, uh, be sure to check those out. Uh, first impression so far? It's pretty cool. Um, I really like it. So, anyway, uh, this has been the Mayor of Gaming. Stay tuned for part two. Thanks for watching. <laughs>